property and I'd like to call the meeting to order of the San Mateo County Harbor District regular meeting roll call please. Uh, Commissioner Gregory? Here. Commissioner Brennan? President Chang Corrali? Present. Commissioner Lorenis? Here. Commissioner Matouche? Present. Great, we have a quorum and we will go on to item number one for public comments. I'm gonna open it up to public comment for items that are not on the agenda. And um, we I have three right here, and I don't know if you have any more, Debbie, but um, if you do get some, well, I welcome them here. I'm so happy to see a lot of people here today because this is the first time in a while that we've had a meeting at Oyster Point Marina. So thank you for being here. Um, so public, the first public comment card that I have is for Chris DeGrande. Is Chris here? <coughs> Welcome, Chris. Hi, hello, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to kind of introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Christy Grandy. This is Roger Martinez. So we're at Dominic's at Oyster Point. So uh, family owned business. Uh, we've had Dominic's for a long time. Roger's been with us for 20 years. So I kind of wanted to put uh, names to the names as well. So uh, if you guys ever need anything, and you know, I know with the transition, we appreciate your help. And, and uh, it was, you know, not the easiest transition for everybody and, and figuring out how we're going to work everything out but we appreciate your help and uh, I know John is going to talk on behalf of the Yacht Club uh, but we've had a great partnership here with them and trying to do uh, involvement with the community. We've done a lot on ourselves um, you know, we've won the, the Mayor's Award twice, once in I think 2002 and then again last year uh, just for the stuff that we do in the community and uh, we're always happy to do what we can and be part of the community and uh, just wanted again to introduce ourselves let you guys know if you ever need anything we're here Thank you. Hello, thank you. John Sims. Welcome, John. I'm going to talk a little bit more than Chris did. Uh, good evening, my name is John Sims. I'm a recreational voter and I'm also a common owner of Oyster Point Yacht Club. As a recreational voter, I've had my boat here at this marina for almost four years and just recently relocated it to Pillar Point. So um, I'm very familiar with both marinas managed by the commission. As a member and common owner of the Yacht Club, we're also a tenant and a recreational voting partner resource for the community and the Harbor District. Um, I want to take a second to digress because we don't always have these opportunities to pay compliments. And I want to reach out to uh, Jim Marlowe here as a, a tenant of the marina and also uh, as having a boat here and being a tenant with the Yacht Club. I just want to thank you for your professional staff, um, all the guys and gals that work here are very personable, friendly. If you have any issues on the docks, they do an excellent job taking care of it. So I just want to give you guys a big thumbs up and a kudos. We <laughs> enjoy working with them. Um, I'd like to share with the board an overview of the Yacht Club's progress in history. Um, and, you know, as with many not-for-profit volunteer organizations, leadership changes yearly, and each majority has influence over the club's activities, Im image, and community engagement. Um, as with you, you're elected, some are new, some won't be here. So, um, obviously, there's this brown building here with an orange light on the fireplace that flashes. Just like to give you a little bit of background because, you know, there, there's a special story behind it. As a 2019 Commodore, I've had an opportunity to lead the club. Each Commodore tries to take the club to the next level, building from their predecessor's work, taking what works and trying new ideas to ultimately leave the club in a better place. I'm pleased with the results of some of the new and old ideas we implemented this year. Uh, we took a lot of small steps, and I refer to it as a lot of a little, with excellent results. Some of these were the first club cruise outs, and cruise ins from other yacht clubs in over three years. Um, we enjoyed a blue water cruise down to Half Moon Bay uh, for Labor Day. We also cruised to the Delta. We partnered with the Department of Boating and Waterways and held a clean 
uh, boating environmental class here in March. Uh, Sequoia Yacht Club joined us for that. Um, we participated in the San Francisco Flare event before uh, Alameda and San Mateo County had funding. Uh, members also participated in the 23rd Annual Wheelchair Regatta. That's a veterans home uh, day on the bay with uh, donated yacht club members' boats. It's uh, mainly non ambulatory You have three minutes. John. Is that my time? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> but we Thank do you. appreciate you. Right. Thank you. Okay, and my last public comment for this part of the agenda is from Kirby Combs. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Uh, I'm a tenant in the Yacht Club, or excuse me, in the Marina. I'm also a um, Yacht Club member. I have my boat here since 2007. I think the uh, Oyster Point Yacht Marina is a community of boaters. We have the Yacht Club, we have the Oyster Point Dragger, Dragons, we have the Harbor District, we have the people that uh, utilize the facilities around here. We've always tried to be good corporate citizens. I think if you, we appreciate the fact that you're having the meeting here. I think if you look at the attendance tonight compared to what you have in Half Moon Bay, I think you'll see an overwhelming majority of the people here have an interest in it and attend the meetings and really will support any of the initiatives that you uh, um, launch. I think as it relates to the budget, I saw a little bit of the budgeting. It seems to me to be a little unfairly uh, slanted toward uh, Half Moon Bay. We encourage, with all the development going on here and over the next few years, I think we need to invest in this area because it's going to be a premium marina going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll, I don't have any other public comment cards. Debbie, anything else? Then I'll close public comment number one and we'll go to commissioner comments. Um, Ed? <coughs> Nancy, I have nothing to report out, Tom. Uh, I attended the California Special Districts Association uh, annual conference. There's just an immense number of courses. It's difficult to pick what you want to attend and where you choose to put, learn something there. There's, a, there's every morning starts with a motivational speech. One of them, <clears throat> this fellow's name is a mouthful, Mark Scharenbreuch. Uh, meaning, making meaningful connections on the road of life, very humorous, entertaining. <clears throat> uh, lunch and dinners, we'd be in a room with all the exhibitors. It's nice to find the different services that are offered to the community and find out how they might be able to help the Harbor District. Uh, some of the sessions I attended were on some of the new laws and on transparency. <clears throat> so all in all, it's a good, very valuable thing and I can highly recommend it to any and all elected officials. Thank you. And I also attended the CSDA conference. It was a last minute trip. Um, so, you know, I'm, I thank Tom for being there because we had to reshuffle our schedules. And um, I spent probably half of my time dealing with my sexual harassment training, so I got that out of the way and it was very informative. And always um, you learn something new there and I was very pleased to be able to do that. And as Tom said, that there are lots of things to, to listen to and learn about. And um, actually, one of the sessions I attended was on drones, believe it or not. It was just a very interesting topic and something that seems to be um, a newer area of interest for public agencies. And, and I, one of the things that piqued my interest was, I don't know, I mean, I'm not saying we're going to use drones, but I thought, oh, well, maybe for harbor rescues or something. I mean, I just... It was just seemed like an interesting session, so I thought that I would attend that. But the, otherwise, I'm with Tom. There were lots of things that um, happened and were very interesting. Okay, committee updates. Ed? We have a um, governance and policy committee on the agenda, so I'll leave that to when we get to that, those items. And that, that's all I have for committees on my side. Okay. Tom? Mm. 
far as the general manager search, uh, we've narrowed it down to approximately six people. I say approximately, we had one person withdraw uh, just recently. We'll be discussing some options on Friday. Nancy? Um, nothing to report. Okay, I don't have anything to report either. Okay, we will go to the consent calendar now. Um, is there a, well, I, I, I do want to pull something off of bills and claims. Is there anything, is any, does anyone else want to pull anything off of consent? Okay, I would like to pull off um, the item for reimbursement to Commissioner Brennan for conferences and meetings for a total of $972.50 um, because I think based on our policies, we need to have a report out as Commissioner Matouche and I have done. And so, I mean, I didn't even know this expense was there until I saw this on the agenda. Motion to approve items two through five <coughs> and uh, ask for a friendly amendment on item one. Well, second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. President Tancarelli? Aye. Commissioner Gregory? Aye. Commissioner Lorenz? Aye. Commissioner Matouche? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Now we're actually at the fun part of our meeting tonight, which is the discussion part. And our first item is um, a presentation by the Oyster Point Dragons. And we have Shirley, who's here in charge of the, well, I don't know, more than in charge, the, the queen bee of the Oyster Point Dragons, right? There's so many volunteers in our organization. Please. Shirley, I just want to say thank you for all the things that y'all do. I know that the community appreciates your organization, and um, you must be so proud to have such great members of your organization here, age from ages 11 to 71, right? Something like that. Uh, you're going to hear more about it. Um, so uh, good evening, commissioners and Harvard District staff. Thank you for coming here today. Um, my name is Shirley Lau, and I am a very proud volunteer of Oyster Point Drag. Um, we started uh, about seven years ago here, uh, but to, it's really difficult for me to explain to you why so many people like dragon boating, and why our team are so work so hard to compete in the world's on the world stage. So I gave that difficult job to the kids. They can do better than me. So I'm going to let them tell you how uh, to share their experiences, to share their stories, and um, also give a little background on what we do uh, as an organization. But at the end, you will hear some very exciting event that's coming up, especially this Sunday. So uh, you will hear that today. But I want to take this opportunity to really thank the, the Harbor District and the staff for providing such a clean and safe environment for our Italian community. Because we're here every weekend. Every weekend uh, on the summer days, we're actually here three times a day. I mean, three times a week. So we come here a lot. And as you can see, we have a large group of people here. And just to show you how important it is for, um, for us to for Oyster Point Dragons to be here and how important it is for this marina and what it means to us. So um, first, yeah, really thank you for all the job you've done and the staff are always watching out for us. And we also want to thank, of course, the Dominic um, Catering, Chris, um, the, uh, the Yacht Club, everybody here has been our big brother since day one. 
and also found them marine, uh, but and Isaac is here, and they done a tremendous job to keep us, keep our team afloat. So uh, before I turn this around, I just want to turn it to the kids. I just want to thank you for hosting your meeting here today. I know it's a, a big move for you to come here, and, but I think it's worth it because look at how many people show up. So, uh, all right, we're going to start with our kids. And three. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Christopher G, and I'm 13 years old. My name is Karina, and I'm 14 years old. I'm a sophomore in high school. So on February 2013, 12 paddlers with only $5 seed money started Oyster Point Dragons a non-profit organization with the goal to create a playground for the, for the community to paddle for better health. Currently, we have over 80 full-time paddlers. Our team consists of heart attack and cancer survivors and people of the ages from 11 to over 70 years old. Also, back in 2015, Orsta Point Dragons formed a student team. Since then, our young paddlers have trained very hard to compete overseas. In the past few years, our student team participated in races in Canada, Hungary, and Thailand. Besides participating in races all, of, all around the world, we partnered with the city of South San Francisco and the town of Coma to host beginner classes for, uh, for local residents. We also do other fun things besides training, such as a sunrise paddling, urban hikes, educational classes, and we participate in the annual coastal cleanup. So far this year, we have taken over 300 people out and on the water to paddle alongside with us. This upcoming free event on Sunday is expected to bring more people to try out the sport with us, which you will hear more about from one of my other teammates, Ben. Oyster Point Dragons has done really well this year. For the first time, we brought three crews out to the biggest race in the Bay Area. The competition was the Northern California International Dragon Boat Festival in Oakland. Our top crew made it to the competitive A division, the highest level in the whole competition. Our high school team has some middle schoolers and still made it to B division, beating out 12 other teams. There's one race left in this season, and it's the Halloween race at Lake Merritt. Everyone competes in their group costume. Let us know if you have any fun team costume ideas. Thank you for having us here. Wow. Um, good, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Albert Liu, and I'm 17 years old. When I was little, as we crossed the Bay Bridge over Treasure Island, I watched the giant boat races and heard the rhythmic drumming and yelling from below. But I never really thought much of it afterwards. If you asked me back then what I'd be doing in 10 years, a giant boat wouldn't have crossed my mind. That's for 10 years now I was attending Aptus Middle School. I remember these flyers in the halls that said something about dragon boat, but I never uh, showed any interest. A few weeks later, my father received an email from the school with the same flyer attached to it. It says something about recruiting middle school students to form a youth dragon boat crew. He kept urging me to give it a shot, but what drew me in was when you said how good it looked on my high school application. <laughs> the first practice I attended, uh, we actually got lost, and I was 15 minutes late, maybe a little bit more. Um, and anyways, um, I was ready to go home and try to come back a different day, but my dad decided it was a good idea to chase them down and yell, Albert, Albert is here. <laughs> it was my first time there, so I didn't know if anyone on the boat knew me. I didn't know anyone on the boat either. Um, unfortunately, they heard him, and they decided to come back to the dock. No one knew who I was, but as they got closer, I could hear people saying, oh, it's Albert, or who is Albert? <laughs> Usually, I would have felt embarrassed, but at that moment, I felt very relieved. Um, if it wasn't for my dad that day, I don't know if I would have considered trying to go in the first place. So I've been paddling with Oyster Point Dragons for almost five years now. 
And this may sound a little bit cheesy, but it has been a life-changing experience. For me, it feels like a long time ago from when I first started to now. And I was able to see this team grow from 12 kids to bring in a full crew of 25 kids to club crew championships in Hungary. This past summer, I was able to make the Team USA U18 National Dragon Boat team. We raced in Bataya, Thailand for five days and I brought home three silver medals. This is something I wouldn't have been able to achieve if it wasn't for my dad calling out to the boat and everyone at Mr. Point. I am grateful for everyone's support making these experiences possible and I hope you can join us on the water and try this work for yourself. Thank you. Thank you.
And when I saw how drunk in voting was like, I told her that I wanted to try it out too. So my friend Maria and I signed up for the Park and Rec program, and I really enjoyed it. It was definitely something new. And then Shirley came up to us, and she asked us if we wanted to join their team to compete in Hungary for the 11th Club Crew World Championships. I thought about it, and we went to practice a few times with the people on the team that were going to Hungary, and it went well. We finally decided to join in for the competition in Hungary. We went to practice every weekend, because we have a lot of work to do. Days have passed until it was time to go to Hungary. We were racing several teams from all over the world. I remember going around and talking to people from different countries, and they're super friendly. The racing was a great experience. It helped me improve my strength and teamwork, which are some things that I could still improve on. After I came back from Hungary, a couple and a couple months have passed, and the next thing I know is that I'll be heading off to Thailand in a couple of months to compete with the national Team USA juniors. It was clear that I would have to continue training harder than I would for other races. So I did. And I also met other people from other states in the team and we raced together against other countries. Over the past two years, I've made many of my greatest memories and experiences so far yet in my life. I know that there is going to be more to my life in the future and it's just full of surprises. You'll never know what might appear right in front of you. All these experiences and the people I've met have also made me realize the importance of teamwork. You will train, compete, win, and lose together. You'll never be alone. I was also a lot more shy back then, and I don't think it's because I was a little child. Throughout the years, I've also met new people, many from other teams, and it made me less bashful. I'm very thankful to be gifted all these opportunities. I know that not everyone has all these amazing chances in life, and I am so grateful that I am one of the ones who do. After a few years of going to practice every weekend and racing numerous times, Dragon Boat just became a huge part of my life. I plan on continuing the sport of Dragon Boat. Thank you all so much for your time. Good evening, Good evening, San Mateo Harbor Commissioners and staff. I'm Arcadia Dong, and I'm in ninth grade, and I've been paddling for almost two years, and paddling has been such an important part of my life. It is a rigorous sport, and it's a way to build a connection with others. One of the ways OPD brings people together is through appreciation of good food. <laughs> <laughs> Just this last weekend, many of the members of OPD brought food to celebrate the end of the season, and everyone was having a fun time celebrating with each other. This also became a great way to congratulate our new members for completing their first season. However, eating isn't just exclusively done for celebrations. It is done throughout the season to have fun and relax with others. Throughout the season, we have been having barbecues and it has been a good way for our younger paddles to show off their cooking skills. During race days, we should also share food with other teams. This allows people from different teams to meet and connect with each other. OPD takes food very seriously. Many of our paddlers go to great lengths to bring or make food for these occasions. This is true when you look at the people who go get up early to make mochi and bread for everyone. Oh my god, that's so good. The, the food that these people bring is a dedication to make other people happy. I find this very admirable and I appreciate them for it. As Gia de Laurentiis said, food brings people together on many different levels. It's nourishment of the soul and body. Thank you. Okay, um, hello commissioners and staff. My name is Benjamin Leung and I am 15 years old. I have been paddling with Oyster Point Dragons for four years and have become the captain of our high school team. 
More recently, I have taken on the role of Youth Project Coordinator for our free event sponsored by South San Francisco Parks and Recreation Department called A Cultural Connection Dragon Village. As Project Coordinator, I am in charge of overseeing the entire process of planning our event. Alongside me, there are several committees of kids aged high school and middle school responsible for finance, marketing, community outreach, and hospitality. For the past months, we have been brainstorming activities for the guests to do during the event, flyer mock-ups, and how we can spread the word throughout the community. You may notice our flyers posted in many different public schools and on websites such as South San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, Everything South San Francisco, and San Mateo Silicon Valley. We are about 90% done planning behind the scenes, and we are very excited for this coming Sunday from 9 till noon. Everyone is, everyone is welcome, and anyone over the age of 10 will have the chance to paddle in our boats. We would like to give a special thank you to Oyster Point Yacht Club and Dominic's for all your support, and we will set up light refreshments in this room and share our personal stories from paddlers like the ones you heard tonight. Thank you for lending your time, and we hope you join us for a fun morning. Does he want to say something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much Thank for you. having us tonight. And it's a weeknight, so unfortunately our kids can't stay. They have to go <laughs> study so they can train. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, Shirley. Do we have any comments or thoughts that you'd like to share with everyone? Thank you so much for coming. I mean, this was really inspiring, and I want to get out. Right. <laughs> to do dragon boating, right? Tom? I didn't realize how uh, competitive it was, and I was glad to hear these details. Uh, only heard a little bit about dragon boat once in a while, passing through. I really appreciate your sharing your stories, your successes, your travels, your wins, your almost wins. <clears throat> and then your food. The food that you enjoyed together no matter what. So thank you. Ed? Thank you for coming. <clears throat> and maybe someday we can do an event at Go Point. Great. Thank you. Okay, so item seven, which is the commercial activity permit application for Tideline Marine Group to operate as a commuter ferry service out of Oyster Point Marina for the remainder of 2019. Um, I do have a public comment, but John, I'd love to have you talk about the report first before we take public comment so that the public can hear your report. I just vote for the board to consider approval of the commercial activity permit application for Tideline Marine Group B to operate a commuter ferry service at Oyster Point Marina for the remainder of 2019. Tideline Marina Group is a weta sanctioned private commuter ferry service between Oyster Point Marina and Harbor Bay, Alameda. Private commuting routes do not conflict with weta roads, uh, and Tideline is um, in an operational agreement with the city of Alameda, a private firm, and weta. Tideline has been successfully operating out of OPM, Oyster Point Marina, as an approved sublease of the Fathom Marine Commercial Activity Permit using their allotted dock space for over six months now. Tideline is now requesting approval of their own commercial activity permit to operate using the Oyster Point Marina guest dock, departing 7.40 a.m., 9.10 a.m., and arriving 4.50 p.m. and 6.15 p.m., Monday through Friday. All vessels will be operated by a U.S. Coast Guard licensed captain. Parking at Oyster Point Marina would not be impacted as commuters would be parking personal vehicles at the pickup uh, site. Tideline will, be, will provide the district with required proof of uh, comprehensive general liability insurance, uh, regulatory license and um, permitting would be the responsibility of Tideline. Uh, approved, approved commercial activity permits are valid through the calendar year with annual fees paid and no changes can, uh, and with no changes, and uh, they can be renewed without further board approval uh, year after year. 
Uh, commercial activity permit application fee of $258 has already been paid by Tideline Marine Group and should uh, approval be granted, the permittee shall pay $900 per month uh, for up to two vessels and $600 per month for each additional vessel. The district currently has another commercial activity permit with a different community uh, commuter ferry service for use of the same guest dock space at Oyster Point Marina for up to 150 to 200 unique passengers each day from 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and from 4.30 p.m. till 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, up to three landings during each time slot. Therefore, staff cannot recommend approval as the usage times for the new Tideline Commercial Activity Permit application conflict with the existing Commercial Activity Permit for the same limited dock space. So it's up to the board that staff, again, just can't recommend approval because it's, we've already got a uh, conflicting Commercial Activity Permit in that mm -hmm. location. Uh, in addition, uh, there is nothing preventing Tideline from continuing operating as they have for over six months at present. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we do have a public comment from Danielle Weir from Tideline Marine, if uh, Danielle's yes. here. Yes. Thank you, Danielle. Come here. Up here, please, thank you. So everyone can hear you. <coughs> service for a company uh, Excelixis. Um, we're adding Genentech to the service for the reverse commute, um, which is something that Weta and our uh, agreement with Weta, they want to see our service not have a deadhead, meaning they want to see other people be on the reverse commute so that it's a um, you know, more efficient service. Um, Genentech is uh, the company that's also hiring Prop SF, which has the agreement with Oyster Point currently. So Heather, who's our point per both of our point persons, um, we've been coordinating with her and um, our actual schedule doesn't conflict with the current prop schedule. Um, also, they only have one boat at a time, only at one time do they have two boats, and again, the times don't conflict, the actual um, arrival and departure times. If they were, we are um, happy to stand back, um, which we do with WIDA if they um, ever are late or early or vice versa. We always give them the right away, which we would do with um, whoever is you know, already operating or at the dock. Um, and so I know that there, I believe the agreement for them is up um, at the end of the year. Um, and so two, two things I guess we're asking. One is if um, you know, we can get approval to start operating there since our actual schedule doesn't conflict with their actual schedule. And then if not at the end of the year or at, uh, possibly toward the end of the year, um, we could get an agreement that reflects the other land, the other agreements we have at, um, for instance, WIDA, where we do uh, operate from a small dock uh, with WIDA boats. Uh, we also have an agreement with Golden Gate Ferry, where we share a small dock in Sausalito with Blue and Gold and with Golden Gate Ferry. And we've um, take, done these operations for over a year now with, um, with both of these groups uh, successfully, where we haven't been um, in conflict and we move all together. So we were just asking, if, um, and the reason why the Fathom, um, the landing location where we had with Fathom is actually not in disrepair, and it's it's we've not we haven't been able to land at the spot that we have been landing at for six months. We've been um, moved to a different location where the dock space is very narrow, and we don't think it would be a good location for once we have a Genentech joining us to have people. Um, getting off the boat and people getting on the boat at the same time, the space just isn't big enough. For one group, um, for the Excelixis group, it's fine because we just have one group getting off the boat. Um, but if we were to add the other service, we would need a larger space than the narrow dock that we've been given. And this is May I ask? Yeah. Hey guys, um, Charlie Gondak with uh, Tideline. Uh, I run the operations for the company. And I just want to add, um, Similar fashion, we run a service uh, in conjunction with Prop SF out of Berkeley, um, where we're operating out of the same facility in a very similar format to what is here. And um, you know, we we work together in a, in a very good format with them 
schedule-wise where there's no crossover, um, and it's something that we feel is entirely um, realistic to accomplish here, where there would be no overlapping with each of us working together out of the guest talk, the public guest talk over here. And um, I think the, where, where we're at right now, where it, it seems to be an issue with uh, staff and commission is how there's, there's the four hour window of time um, that is allocated to Genentech to land when they're not actually landing in that area or landing at the facility in that four hour time. You know, they're, they're just, they're there at, at, at the scheduled stops that they have. Um, and in actuality, if you go there at a certain time, they might not be there for an hour or a certain, the, the dock is left empty at, a lot of times from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, is what I'm getting at. So I, we feel that there is sufficient space for us to play along and be part of this operation. I think we submitted our first commercial activity permit back in maybe 2017 yeah. um, to start the progress of, of this. And uh, at the moment in time when um, the, the harbor um, you know, shared the opportunity that we could land with Fathom, we went with that. And it's worked out great so far. And uh, just with things pending, we, we feel like it, it's a better service and a better opportunity to be landing at the guest dock um, over there. So that's all I have. Thank you. OK, question, comments, Ed? Does, um, uh, yeah, John, does, Go ahead, Nancy. Does our um, current agreement with Genentech involve that window of time uh, during which there could be overlap between the two ferry services, is that that's the conflict? Yes, as I stated, uh, we've currently got a commercial activity permit with Prop SF is mm -hmm. the, as, uh, as has been brought up, I uh, didn't want to involve our other commercial activity permittee, but we've not heard from that other commercial activity permittee at all. We do not have a commercial activity permit with Genentech. We have oh, a commercial okay. activity permit with, with Prop, Prop SF. SF. Sorry. Prop SF is the uh, commercial activity permit does allow them to uh, to have the entire dock um, that's allotted um, during the same time frame that Tideline is requesting to do their commuter um, service as well. Uh, in addition, we already have challenges with uh, Prop SF, uh, with the other commercial activity permittee, bringing in more than one vessel and parking it for extended periods of time um, when they're only supposed to have one vessel. So it already is a, um, a challenge for us. Um, I do not see how the staff can recommend the board to approve um, a, another commercial activity permittee use of the same dock during the same yeah. time periods that we've already um, granted to another commercial activity mm -hmm. permittee. And how, how long is our contract with Prop SF? All through? commercial activity permits are for the calendar year. Um, should Prop SF contact the district and um, tell the district that they do not wish to renew their commercial activity permit as it is currently written, mm -hmm. they could do so. And we could modify it mm -hmm. um, and bring it back to the board for reconsideration for 2020. Okay. But they've yet to do so. I've yet to hear anything from Prop SF, our current commercial activity permittee. But in any event, at the end of the year, we have an opportunity to renegotiate that contract or to consider how we want to go forward with there are ferries. All right? commercial activity permits, if they're not modified or changed, mm -hmm. Um, can self-renew without board approval. Mm. Um, so it would require Prop SF to um, inform us that they wish to have their mm. commercial activity permit modified, which of course we would uh, bring back to the board for consideration. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Uh, are, are we allowed to request a consideration for the adjustment of, in the new year for the contract because how it's set right now is that 
no one ever will be able to operate in and out of there from that allotted time. And it, it doesn't really make sense um, as far as it, it being an, an open space for you know, groups to go in and out um, who are permitted um, you know, when there's a lot of time available to do so. The fact is, is that there is just, there is time to go in and out of there um, and to do it safely and um, to comply with schedules and number one safety. I mean, we're, we're, safety is our number one concept with our company. It's the, the thing that we abide by and that's why we're where we are right now um, with our group. And, um, you know, we, I'm, I'm just getting at it. If, if there's a possibility that we can potentially request that change, because it seems like this was potentially written in a way to lock groups out or, or you know, like not to be able to schedule around potentially. Um, like if you had a charter group coming in at 9 a.m. that just wanted to come in for a charter, or would they not be allowed to do that? If you ask me, just yeah. like just yeah. like we, just like the district rents slips monthly, the the tenant that rents that slip from the district has sole use of the slip for the month. Um, if they're renting it monthly, if they're renting it on a transient basis. They get it for the day. Um, likewise, Prop SF currently has a commercial activity permit for use of the guest dock seven five days a week. <coughs> During those uh, a lot of time, the window. <laughs> yes, the whole window. They can increase their services if they wish to have seven boats. They can use that entire window for their operations. That's what their commercial activity permit uh, allows them. Is there an opportunity for other people to join the uh, use the guest dock too, or is it just for them? For During those periods, that, I mean, that year, slip, if you will, has already been rented. But once the agreement, once the agreement is over, um, and other that agreement is self that agreement is self renewing okay. for well, as long as they wish to continue um, using that uh, that area. Again, uh, I seem to have been misled because it sounds like you were insinuating that you contacted the current commercial activity permittee. And that no, they just were in agreement. Heather, that Heather. they were in agreement with you. But now you're saying that you've not contacted. No, we've contacted through Heather. Heather is, at all? Uh, we've contacted them through Heather. Heather is the chief. Okay. Well, like I yeah. said before, if Prop SF approaches us, okay. then they can certainly amend a request or amend their commercial activity permit. But at present, it's not occurred. And so, but you would never ask to amend it on your end. Or just they were the only ones that could amend it. You won't be able to amend it on your end once the agreements have been. No, when someone rents a slip for us from us for a month or whatever time period, we allow them to have use of that dock space. We don't later ask them uh, if they don't want it anymore. This isn't. This is not a, a slip. This isn't a slip. I'm talking about the guest dock. The public guest dock. It's a, a dock. It doesn't make any difference if it's actually got two finger piers or not. Okay. In, so a, can I in say addition, is there, any, yeah. is there any reason why um, the dock that you've been currently using somehow now has been damaged so much that you can't repair it? No, like, no, not at all. Um, yeah. But, well, I mean, we, 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 we don't, I mean, we're not necessarily looking to re repair. We'd definitely be part of an apartment. It should be arguably the responsibility of the user to keep the dock in, um, in repairable or in good condition. So, um, so that's John, we need to continue to, to address, I guess, yeah. with our commercial activity. Yeah, I was going to have you speak. Okay, are you sure? I wanted you to have an yes. opportunity to speak. Yeah, since. So, I get where you're coming from, and the challenge is that what you're asking us to do is to, to change essentially a contract that we have, and we, we can't do that. It's a signed contract, and it's written in such a way that, as John said, self renews. Um, and I have a lot of respect for John and the rest of the staff, and so I, I can't see a way around it. I think the best thing for you guys to do is, as John's suggesting, is work with the folks that are, that are dealing with that. And then that would, um, 
And then at any time they come and, uh, and ask to change it, then it can be changed, or does it have to wait for the year? If there's an expiration date on their agreement, it's well, the year. I, I do have a question to piggyback on that, yeah. on what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So yeah, that, go ahead. that would be a question for, for yeah. John. I would have no problem bringing it to the, if the yeah. current commercial activity yeah, permittee requests to have their commercial activity permit amended, I'd have no problem bringing it to the next board meeting. Okay. Yeah. I have uh, operated water taxis on the bay. I've done assist tug work on the bay. I looked at that dock and uh, thought, boy, it doesn't look too substantial to me. And I didn't know. I was just talking to Mr. Merlo and saying, do we need some commercial upgrades to take this extra traffic? Uh, are the cleats sufficient? Uh, there's just some things I'm concerned with <clears throat> and then one of the things I look at this fee of 900 monthly uh, I'm thinking wow that is low if you look at uh, what the slip renters are paying here if you look at what uh, Pillar Point Harbor charges and then the passenger service fees <clears throat> this whole thing brings back when we got rid of docks here for the ferry terminal but we got 1.3 million dollars and we built the dock so I, when it comes time to renew, I would severely be in favor of looking at the fees and finding out, is the public being well served? And trust me, nobody wants to get cars off the freeway more than I do. <laughs> You've got uh, three active boaters on this board. You've got uh, another uh, president who goes out on occasional boats. <clears throat> uh, we support things on the water. Um, I can't imagine a better way to get to work than being on the water and coming home on the water. Um, it means a lot to three out of the four on this board right now. <clears throat> but I worry about uh, <clears throat> overstepping somebody else's uh, lease. Uh, how do we upgrade this? It's like, how do you upgrade the area that you're in to make it better right now to fit your needs? There's a lot of things to look at. And I'd say at this point, uh, we have to, at a minimum, table this until we get more information and satisfactory to staff and we've looked at a few different ways to approach this. Yeah, I would agree with that. Is this for the fa fa for Fathom or for the uh, guest stock? The I Fathom area that. you've got now. Fathom, okay. But we still have to look at the other dock in the future and find out <clears throat> it was built with public funds. Uh, is this the best use and opportunity for the county and uh, at the same time, looking at our transportation challenges, uh, you have a fellow that's worked at harbors and marinas around the world, and he's got a lot of experience in this area. I'd want to hear <clears throat> what people have to say about putting increased traffic. Uh, that dock doesn't look that substantial to me. So you just mentioned tabling this. Do you want to table this, or do you, John, would that work until... Again, we, we, table continue, it. we want to continue to work with all commercial or um, private, even um, uh, commuter ferry services. So we want to do anything we can to, to try to facilitate, just as uh, as we did, frankly, to to try to work with Fathom Marine to get them where they're currently working out of. Um, uh, again, it's it's disappointing that um, that the the dock has become in um, uh, has been allowed. To get into such a state of disrepair that uh, it sounds like they're no longer comfortable using it. Uh, so that's a that's a serious concern that we need to, to address. Uh, and again, if, uh, if Tideline has the opportunity to communicate with PropSF and PropSF approaches us and wants to uh, modify their commercial activity permit because if in fact what they're telling us is true, there's plenty of time for multiple boats to, um, to use that same limited dock space, then we would, of course, try to facilitate that. Ed? So I'd like to point out, I agree with you, John, um, and this is a very simple request. I don't think we need to table this. I think that what, what Tom is suggesting is uh, a complete other dialogue, how to facilitate more transit here. That's a bigger picture than what, what we're being asked here. I think the message to you guys is we're stuck with the way the contracts work, and the best opportunity for you to, to try to get what you need is to work with 
this other group right. and try to work it out. Okay. I mean, that sounds Hopefully they're, they're willing to do it. I mean, I believe they are. Um, we kind of went, got started down this path. Um, uh, we thought it would be a different process, and then we right. started learning more. We decided just kind of follow through and meet you guys and learn what, we, what needs to happen. And so I would encourage you to stay in contact with, with staff on this yes. so that by the time you come, it comes to the board, you guys have already worked it out. Sure. Every, everyone knows how all the pieces fit together. That sounds great. And definitely appreciate your time. And um, one last thing is, you know, we're all about bringing revenue to, to this. And those fees, that's not, we didn't establish those. Right. So that's kind of what right. was presented to us. Um, with other facilities, we, we do work to help in, improve um, areas, you know, such as putting in cleats and doing other things, mm -hmm. helping infrastructure with the docks. Mm -hmm. We haven't been requested to or haven't had that relationship with Fathom to do so. We've right. brought up some things, but we do we do, do that with different entities that we work with currently, and as well as pay higher landing fees than you see right now. So I'll just say that um, I do support ferry transportation. It's been something that I've always promoted whenever we can. So I do want to keep the dialogue open. I definitely <coughs> encourage y'all to work through our staff and work with the other parties. So do you want to, um, do you want us to make a motion and approve this resolution not, to, well, or not approve the resolution? Yeah, because there's, um, I mean, or we don't have to do anything and then nothing will get, nothing will happen. Yeah, we're arguing no action yeah. to be taken. Okay. Is that okay with the board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, item number eight, which is the, it's informational only, but it's about the CalPERS out of class appointment. Julie? This is Jane Crowley, Commissioner, getting in. This is an informational only report. Um, district staff is required to report out all out-of-class appointments to CalPERS at the end of the fiscal year by July 31st. This is a relatively new requirement from the Government Code 20480. And an out-of-class appointment is defined as an appointment to an upgraded position or higher classification by an employer or governing body board or body in a vacant position for a limited duration. A vacant position is a position that is vacant during recruitment for a permanent appointment. Per the government code, a contracting agency will be penalized by CalPERS if the out-of-class appointment exceeds 960 hours in each fiscal year. Staff solicited assistance interpreting the government code for with our employment attorneys, and they determined that John Moran, in his capacity as interim general manager, is working an out of class appointment. As such, the district will be exposed to a penalty if we continue to have John work as interim general manager for more than 960 hours this fiscal year. We calculated that John will reach those hours on December 13th of 2019. The penalty um, to CalPERS, the penalty the district will have to pay to CalPERS is three times the difference between the sum of the employee and the employer contributions for the new position, which is the interim general manager position, versus the old position, which is the director of operations, plus a $200 filing fee. Due to the timing of hiring the CPSHR consulting to assist in the general manager recruitment, the district was not exposed to this penalty in the prior fiscal year. District staff has estimated the penalty to re range from about $7,000 uh, if John stays in this position through the end of the year to 13,500 if he stays in this position at the end of the fiscal year on 63020. Depending on how lo long John works as in the interim general <coughs> manager role. Uh, we are allowed the 960 hours before the penalty kicks in, so it would only be payable if John is the interim past December 13. Um, there's a little table here as an estimate of, you know, if he's 
the interim at the end of next quarter, it's 10,200, but the primary dates are um, hiring the interim, hiring a general manager um, by December 13th, 2019. If John works a, one day over that, then the district has to pay close to $7,000. And then it goes on every quarter, right? If we don't hire a general manager, it sounds right. like. And it goes on. So this is informational. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Thank you, Julie. Ed, any questions or nope. comments? Thank you. Tom? No. Nancy? No. Okay, thank you, Julie. We'll go to item nine, which is to discuss the district general council hiring process and provide direction to staff or approve appointment of district council. Julie. Um, on August 21st, 2019, the Harbor Commissioner authorized the interim general manager to put out an RFP for a new general council. Staff prepared an RFP and advertised it in the Half Moon Bay Review and the San Mateo Daily Journal, the district's website, and social media. We also sent the RFP to multiple law firms. Uh, there's a list in your staff report. And we received three proposals uh, by the September the 23rd deadline, uh, including from the law offices of Bill Ford, Adamski, Murawski, Mer Madden, Cumberland, and Green, and Richards, Watson, and Bershon. This was a very shortened period because we had received a letter of resignation from our current district uh, council. And then on September 19th, 2019, an ad hoc general council selection committee was formed to review the proposals. After discussion with committee members, it was recommended that all three firms move forward to the interview process with the full board at a special meeting. However, subsequent communications to staff indicate that there may be additional ideas about the hiring process. Staff recommends that the Board of Harbor Commissions discuss the alternatives and direct staff accordingly. Alternative recommendations include directing the interim general manager to enter into an agreement with one of the three firms due to the immediate need to hire a district council and also due to the fact that the ad hoc committee was unable to make a recommendation of a finalist. Uh, another alternative motion is to direct staff to notice a closed session meeting and invite the three um, firms to interview. And another alternative is to issue a new request for proposal. So staff is just asking for direction. Okay, so Nancy and Ed were on the ad hoc committee for the general council search. So um, do y'all have anything to add to Julie's report? Yes. Ed? So I think, thank you for bringing it to our attention. We, we had a little bit of a discussion about it. I, it's important to me to make the right choice and not to rush into this. And I realize that we have a time constraint. So one option uh, that I think we should explore before we jump into just taking these three firms that, that filled out the RFP is to consider from the, even from these three firms, whether we can have attorneys work for us for a period of time until we, we decide to enter into a long-term contract with a law firm. It's an important consideration. I believe we should take our time and take a measured approach and hire the right firm. Um, any other comments? Nancy, do you have anything um, from yes, the Yes, I'm committee? more of a mind to make a motion to uh, hire one of the firms tonight. This is Bill's last night with us. Thank you for sticking around. Um, 
But I'm, I'm ready to make a motion and Any see where that goes. Oh, okay. Is that a but, motion? But we, but you can make a uh, motion and we can have the discussion if there's a okay, second. Yeah, I, I'd like to move that we engage RWG Law as our new general counsel. I'll second that so we can start the discussion. Do you have any comments, Tom? I just think uh, with our uh, current counsel, who has done a superb job uh, considering everything he's had to go through, um, thank you for all you've done. And I look forward to bringing a group on as soon as possible, whoever it is. Ed, do you have any other comments? So we are, let me just make sure I understand the, the motion. We, we are making a motion to hire a law firm which we've not interviewed or had any interaction with other than the paperwork that's in front of us. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I think it's a terrible idea. I have a comment. Um, thank you, Bill, for being here for the since the beginning of the year and unfortunately we're stuck in the same situation where we didn't have anyone on the board well we're not stuck in the same we had an RFP process that I'm glad that commissioners Ryering and Matouche um, kind of oversaw because the last time when we hired the law firm none of us on the board had a chance to interview any of the candidates there was no RFP process so I would like to commend the two ad hoc committee members for the work that they have done to make this process as transparent as possible because this is way more transparent than the previous process when we hired um, Bill's firm. I never met Bill before we hired him. We never had the offer to interview any of the candidates. So that process was so closed that the first time I met Bill really was when he first was hired. And I'm glad I've gotten to know you over the last couple of months, Bill. So I want to thank you for the, you do great work. But I wish I'd known or had the chance to do, uh, to meet you beforehand. So um, I think that this process has been way more open than the last process when Commissioner Brennan even admitted that we never had an RFP process to hire um, Mr. Parkins' firm. So I am, totally okay with moving forward based on the um, the packets, the resumes, the presentations that we have received. And, you know, Ed, you were also on this ad hoc committee with Nancy. I don't even think that, I don't know, did y'all even meet? I don't even know if y'all met, but I'm just ad saying that committee this, didn't meet. Okay, well, this process has been more open than the last process as far as I'm concerned. So, um, any other comments before we take the vote? Thank you. John Olam for item number nine. As you know, uh, President Crowley, I kind of agreed with you on how the process was run last time. And uh, made, my, made that point clear that we did a horrible job in how we selected the last attorney. Um, I think the results speak for themselves. Um, but you're just going on and double downing on it because you think it's slightly better. I mean, this seems like such a childish argument. It wasn't on the agenda tonight. It was on the agenda tonight was to talk about a process. And now you're talking about hiring somebody without any process. I don't understand how this could even be done tonight without being a Brown Act violation. I don't understand why you couldn't just vote for anything if you're going to use that, that logic. And I'm sure your attorney will explain to you why it's not a Brown Act violation because you worked this all out beforehand. But uh, at any rate, I, I don't understand why you're trying to act like people you say you're trying not to act like. You say you want transparency, and you, for example, you want transparency for the next manager. Well, look at the agenda. 
for the next Friday's meeting. There's nothing on it. There's no way to tell what is going on for that nine hours. And if here you're going to go change what was going on tonight, you go from discussing to process to select, to selecting. I understand that uh, the Commissioner um, Corrali just isn't going to look at me, but Commissioner Rary, I mean, is, is this how you always treat people who disagree with your, uh, your choices and your uh, explanations? You paid attention to everybody else, you haven't looked at me once. And this is your baby. And Ms. Corrali, would you read Robert's Rules of Order? It's really bad for for the President to jump in and second motions, at least give Tom a chance to second the motion, make it look like it wasn't set up beforehand. It's about the third time we've done that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Call for the question. Roll call, please. And would you please repeat the motion? Yes. For the general manager, interim general manager, to enter into an agreement with the law firm of Richard Lawson and Kershaw? Correct. Um, so there is a yeah, motion in a second, right? Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Matouche? Aye. Commissioner Lorenz? No. Commissioner Riley? Aye. President Shane Rowland? Aye. The motion carries. So um, we are, I'm going to be moving one item up, which is item 13, since this was something that the entire board agreed would be on this committee's agenda, or this uh, meeting's agenda, which is uh, the policy on the standing committees, discuss assignment of public members to um, the committees. Julie? On March 2nd, 2016, the policy was amended to decrease the number of public members that a commissioner could select to serve on a committee from two to one. The policy was also amended to require that the public member participate in a Brown Act webinar and added language to state that if a public member assigned to a committee consistently works against the mission and the goals of the committee, the board president has the option to remove the public member from the committee. On December 7th, 2016, the policy was updated to require standing committees to establish a role and scope of duties to be adopted by the Harbor Commission. In addition, the policy was amended to remove the ability of public members to serve on a standing committee. On January 10th, 2019, the policy was updated to reinstate the ability of a public member to serve on a committee. Uh, attached to this staff report is the current um, policy and the previous policy. And I would open up to the motion for discussion. I'll open it up for discussion now, Nancy. You can go around too if you want. Or Tom, if you want to start. Tom can start. Uh, I, for one, have never understood why we had to have a member of the public on a committee to uh, make to do the work of the committee because members of the public can come into any meeting and they're always welcome to make comments. Uh, so I don't see the purpose in having a standing policy to put members of the public on our committees. We have committees, uh, members of the public can come to these meetings, they can come to committee meetings, so I don't see a uh, reason to have a policy in place of having members of the public on committees. Ed? Well, I'll, I'll address Tom's question first. and and then give you my comments. So the, the reason to have public members as act, acting voting members in a committee, there's a lot of reasons for it. One is when you have a public member who's a, a member of the committee that can vote, 
it engages them. We reach out into the public for many reasons, but one of the most important reasons is we're not experts on everything. So when we have a committee that has folks from the public that have an interest in what this committee is about, we can bring in experts to advise us. And having a, a member of the public as a voting member encourages them to come to our meetings, to be more active. It also provides the public with an opportunity to get experience in public service with the Brown Act, which we're, if you are a member of the public as a voting member of the committee, you're subject to the Brown Act, so you, it offers the public an opportunity to, to experience being an active member in a in, um, committee under the Brown Act. It gives you an idea of what it's like to do the kind of work that we're doing here. The other reason to have a public member on the committee is if you have two, two commissioners on a committee and you have one public voting member, that means that if one commissioner does not show up, you can, have, you can still have the meeting. And as a commissioner, under the, the old policy, I spent eight months trying to convince my fellow commissioner to join a committee meeting so we could have a public meeting. Eight months. So having a member of the public who's actually interested in the work of the committee would have allowed me to have, have that committee meeting the first month and, and progress. Nancy? So another oh, point. Sorry. The Board of Supervisors has commissions. My wife. Mary Lorenis worked on the Commission on Aging. That is a commission that works alongside the Board of Supervisors. They have members of the public join them. It's an acting commission. They make recommend recommendations to the Board of Supervisors, just like a committee does. So what a committee does, in case you don't know, in case some of my, my commissioners have forgotten, they do not make rules. So having a public member who votes on, on what to bring forth to the commission, it's not as if a member of the public is going to, going to dictate policy to this elected board. What a member of the public would do is help us decide what to bring to the board for a vote. So it's not as if having a member of the public will change anything that, or take power away from this board. What it actually does is provide power to the board by bringing in intellectual power that we may not have. Nancy, Oh, well, I originally voted for this change because I was kind of unfamiliar with how it was going to work. But the way I saw it play out, I think it was a better idea than it worked in practice. Um, I've been to a wildlife committee meeting that you chair, Ed, and the room was filled with people. Um, and so I know that you can get people out for issues that you care about and that the community cares about. Um, the one member of the public that we have who is acting as a voting member of a committee um, is an unelected person who can break a vote between two commissioners who are on the committee and therefore change the direction of the input that's going to be given to the committee afterward. And I see that as <clears throat> very problematic. Uh, in practice as well, I've seen this individual direct staff and legal counsel. Um, and so I've changed my mind completely about this policy and I'd like to see it changed back to how it used to be. So I have a quick question for staff. If we wanted to change this back, would it revert back to the December 7th, 2016 policy, which was to, or, or, which, um, to remove the ability of public members to serve on a standing committee? Because there were three different dates here, January 6th, 2016, March 2nd, 2016, and the final policy that um, was the original policy before the current one was dated December 7th, 2016. Would it go back to that or does that have to be included in a motion? Because if it has to be included in a motion, I'll make the motion to, um, to, to go back to the policy 
for standing for public members um, for the date for that policy dated 2007-2016. So I don't know what the process. That was the last. That was the last um, the, the actual, policy. Yeah, that okay. was the last PIP policy. So that's what it would revert yes. back to. Is that right. correct? That's correct. Yes. To the December 7, 2016. Yes. Okay. So I'll make a motion to bring that back to the put change the policy back to the December 7, 2016 policy, which is 3.0 policy on standing committees, policy for, uh, for the purpose of the policy committee meeting. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'd like to comment again. Please. So in response to Commissioner Ryering's comments on our committee, that is exactly the point of having members of the public in our committees. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be one, one, commit, one voting member, it can be more than that. And the point is to have public input and to have that public input uh, be a, a, a valuable portion, part of the committee. And again, I reassert that all that happens in our committees is we have discussions and then we we bring things to the to the board for a vote. If something is in a document that comes before the board that commissioners don't like, it can be sent back to the committee. That's the whole point of the process. And the idea is is to come up with a better document in the end. It's not about about um, pushing one person's agenda or another, as was suggested. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Lorenis? No. no. President Chankarali? Aye. Commissioner Riley? Aye. Commissioner Matush? Aye. That motion carries. So now we are on. Um, Actually, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Yes. I'll second that. Oh, God. Any discussion? Money yeah, I have discussion. I didn't know that someone was here to present. I never got anything about that, so I'm I, sorry. So there is a motion in a second, but please. You asked if there was a discussion. Yes. yes, there is a discussion. Please. This is the second time we've done this. We now have a, a situation where, surprisingly, the three commissioners managed to come up with with an agreement to just end meetings. So I look forward to the special meeting that will probably follow this, like it did last time, where we decided to change the leadership. Any other discussion? Roll call. I finish the meeting. If there's Debbie a motion to adjourn. Roll call, please, Debbie. We have to do the roll call. Hi. Commissioner Ryrie? Aye. President Chang Corrales? Aye. Commissioner Lorenz? No. Hey, the motion is adjourned at 750. You, you cowards. You're just jerking around. You've got people out here to see the meeting and you just ended at 8 o'clock. It's got hours left to go.